HeadRightCoach.com, radialized anterior capsule. Now what? How do you insert the IOL here without causing more issues? So we have an anonymous surgeon who's operating. This is a very advanced surgeon who's done more than 10,000 surgeries. And so starting the caps rex with just forceps, with an advanced surgeon like this, looks like a left-handed surgeon who's using the right hand to fixate the eye via the paracentesis. Take a look. The caps rex looks fine. So we don't have any radialization here. It looks normal. Normal rex is completed. And you saw the intro picture. You know it's going to be radialized. So tell me, when does that happen? A little higher dissection being done. That looks very reasonable. And again, rotating the lens nucleus beautifully. So, so far, so good. So the question is, when does this radialize? Now, if you have a small orexis and you're trying to do a nuclear flip or prolapse it out of the bag, that can cause pressure, but that's not the case here. So we're going to wonder, again, where are we having the issue? Let's see what kind of nuclear fractus technique we're going to do. Looks like a chop, a little horizontal chop. That looks pretty reasonable. Got a partial chop there, buzzing again using the chopper to come and bring it up out of the capsular bag. So pretty good. All looks pretty routine. Certainly you can tell this is an advanced surgeon who's operating. By the way, just as a side note, look, the draping is pretty good. All latches are out of the way. This looks like a beautiful case. So a little bit more on the phaco power, judicious use of phaco power, and you can see this nucleus comes out of the eye very quickly. Again, the chop technique works great here. And the lens nucleus is relatively soft. Here's a second half that can be brought up. There's another chop with the chopper. Looks great. Aspirate this down. Notice how the chopper's in the safe position. It's interesting how all advanced surgeons have a lot of similarities in the way I operate, especially with that chopper in the safety position. So, so far, so good. Came out of the eye with the fake open. But let's see. We already know there's going to be a weakness in the sub incisional area. Is it okay now? It looks reasonable. Let's wait till he has the IA probe in the eye. Here's a coaxial IA probe, removing lens cortex. So again, we're trying to figure out where do we have that radialization. That all looks good. And we know it's going to happen in the sub-incisional area. It may have happened already with the phaco probe coming out of the eye. Maybe that was part of it. Maybe it was just bad luck. Maybe there's some sort of weakness. But now you can tell already. There it is. In that sub-incisional space, we can see there is the radialized capsular axis edge. At this point, you got to be very careful. If you've noticed it by now, I'd fill the eye with viscoelastic through the side port and not let it deflate. If you don't notice it until this point, that's okay also. Take your time. Let's inflate the capsular bag gently. You don't want a massive inflation to cause any pressure. You don't want that radialized area to zip around the lens equator and zip and tear the posterior capsule. It can definitely happen. It can definitely run back there. So now with the eye of viscoelastic, let's get the lens in the eye. Now what are the options here? You can put a single piece of lens in the bag like this. This will be fine. In this case, I'd try to orient the haptics 90 degrees away from that area. You could put a sulcus lens and do an optic capture and you'd have a pretty good result as well. So any of these are all reasonable approaches. You could put a three-piece lens in the capture bag as well. So removing viscoelastic, being very gentle here. Again, you want to put less stress. I agree, in this case, I would not be aggressive. I may not even go behind the optic at all. We'll remove enough viscoelastic to have a good result, and we won't worry. What are the long-term results of this? Really nothing. We're going to seal up the, the, the incisions now and inflate the anterior chamber. As long as this eye can be held stable in the initial period of healing, there'll be good fibrosis and contraction of the capsular bag, and this is not going to have any deleterious effect on the patient's vision. So this anterior capsular tear out, as long as it's managed like it was in this case, can still give you a beautiful result at the end. So nicely managed, anonymous surgeon, thank you for the submission. If you have a good idea for a video, submit it. Go to cataractcoach.com, click on our link, submit your video. We can analyze it here, and we'll all learn from you. Thank you.